guys, Alex here once again. Just before we get started in the video, I just want to thank everybody for subscribing. I've got 50 subscribers now and it is incredible. Um, when we get to 100 subscribers and I'm going to do a competition, so stay tuned for that. But today we're going to be talking about the new upcoming movie called Finding Dory. So stay right where you are, this is going to be interesting. So guys, we know how excited many of us are for the new sequel of Finding Nemo, they've officially brought out a Finding Dory. Now, Finding Dory is where she's on a search to find her parents and she learns a few things, the meaning of family along the way. Now, as owners, we know how hard it is to keep a blue tank because they're so sensitive, uh, they can get many diseases and everything like that. Now, when Finding Nemo very first came out, there was a 30% skyrocket demand for clownfish. Now, as owners and hobbyists, we're co quite concerned about what's going to happen when Finding Dory comes out. So, let's talk about that and he let's hear everyone's opinions about it. So, let's get started. The problem with keeping exotic fish, such as the clownfish and blue tanks looking to get full dory as pets, aren't as easy to care for like goldfish. These fish have specific diets and requirements to live happy and healthy for the remaining of their life, and their underwater lives are completely different than what the movie goers think. When Finding Nemo premiered in 2003, wholesalers and retailers we're importing thousands of clownfish to meet the high demands for customers, destroying many habitats in the Great Barrier Reef for wild-caught clownfish. We all know that that is wrong and should not happen. The question we all need to think to ourselves is, what impact will Finding Dory have to our local fish stores, and also the blue tang environment? Will they destroy habitats just to catch more, because we don't have a lot of captive bred? Or what will happen? When I started into this hobby, I was really nervous to purchase my own blue tang. Not only because of the sensitivity and how hard they are, it's because I didn't want to risk giving up a life just in case it failed. Now, to keep a blue tang very healthy can be challenging at some times. And for me, I started by purchasing a yellow-tailed damselfish for the simple fact is they are similar in colour. They aren't the same shape or size as a blue tang but they're easier to care for. And that was my blue tank all over. Now, for anyone out there who wants to purchase their own dory, what I recommend is doing a lot of research. Now, start off with the basic care. Um, if they're aggressive, semi-aggressive, whereas they're reef compatible, um, what diseases they're immune to, everything like that. So you guys have got a better understanding. And then you can also think, all right, so, what happens if it gets white spot? What do I do? You're going to be more knowledgeable enough to keep a healthy and happy blue tank. So what diseases can tangs catch? Ick is a protozoan disease that is often called white spot disease. As you guys can see, the white spots on the, on the blue tank is known as ick and white spot. It is a widespread disease but is most common in tanks such as yellow and blue tanks. The life cycle of ick is complicated, but it's very important to understand the treatment and prevention of ick. Once the ick protozoan attaches to the side of the fish, it begins feeding on the skin and causing irritation. So by irritation, you can see that the fish is swimming or scraping itself onto rocks to avoid and to neutralize the irritation. The fish's body begins to wall off the parasite. To try and limit the damage, the protozoan continues to move around the cyst, feeding and growing, while the body continues to further encapsulate and wall it off. This encapsulation by the body is one of the reasons why it is so difficult to treat during the stage of the disease because medications cannot penetrate through the wall of the cyst to reach the ick parasite. So preventing ick can be as simple as purchasing fish that are healthy, free of all signs of diseases and doing regular water changes, making sure that your temperature is right, there's no fluctuations in temperatures because if your temperature goes really low and high, that's got a greater chance of causing ick in your aquarium. So now we know why blue tanks can be hard to keep. We need to understand why it is important that our local fish stores don't just sell blue tanks like goldfish and make sure they're going to a right, healthy home. 
I have not seen many local fish stores around my area putting up warning signs. Although Petco, they state that blue tanks like Dory are not recommended for beginning Aquarius. Some stores are already stocking high demands for the blue tanks. So guys, comment below what you guys think. I'm so hyped to finally watch the new film, uh, which is coming out in cinemas very soon. So guys, make sure you put the thumbs up and have a great day.